gentlemen, to another episode of Improv Gaming, where we talk to you about video game content and the ramifications of such content. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, this going to <laughs> you were very forceful. Yeah, ramifications. I was. I was. Allow me to introduce Mr. I'm Wondering himself, the host with the most, wearing the fedora cap today. It is Mr. Peter Anderson. To be fair, I've been wearing this a lot. But Lately. not here. Yeah, here. No. The last couple of shows, I've been wearing it. Have you? Yeah. Oh. I've been trying. I don't think so. I've been trying. No, I think the last week you didn't. You had the shirt that matched your fedora, but you didn't have the fedora. Oh yeah, because we were going. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. If you didn't know, this beautiful bastard over here <laughs> is my Puerto Rican pancake maker. He only has the best ponytail in the business. It's fabulous, Mr. Nicholas De Hazard. How's it going tonight, everybody? And if you didn't know, this is Improv Gaming, and today's topic of the show is the value of a gaming experience. Now, allow me to elaborate on oh, that. Oh, please. Hold value on. is a very broad term, right? It's like a broad stroke. And I, I want to teach you guys a little something. What I talk about you're value... You're going to teach us how to paint it while you're at it. it. Yeah, yeah, why not? It's a very broad stroke. But value, uh, when I'm talking about it and the way I'm referring to it is monetary value. So, money. What is the value of a gaming experience for you? So, in terms of cash, how much cash are you willing to play for or pay for an experience like No Man's Sky, an experience like sure. Minecraft, an experience like Journey, an experience like Gears Witcher. of War, Witcher, right? Now, do all those different experiences feel to you like you should have less value for some, more value for others. Okay, Should you be spending more money on some games, less money on other games? Okay. May I? Yes. Please do. What's up, guys? Please um, do. It, to first <coughs> say to the point is, um, if you think about it, games are actually very cheap right now. Back in the N64 era, yes. games were 80, 90 bucks, you know, sometimes 100 depending on the game, you know. So it's incredibly cheap. But I feel... We'll get cheaper when we cut out the middleman. And when I mean the middleman, I mean GameStops, Best Buys. Once everything goes digital, then I could see Ubisoft saying, oh, we're not going to charge 60 anymore, $50, you know? And that will make, you know, EA go, you know what, make it uh, the new Madden, $45, you know? Yeah, but I, but... I, but that's why I think on that subject. But when it comes to what you, the topic is... It's interesting because Journey, honestly, I would have, knowing what I know now, I would have paid $30 for Journey. How much Even, did you spend on Journey? Free. It free. was free for the month. Oh, okay. If you, How much is it normally? Fourteen ninety nine. Okay. But that's a game that I would have spent easily. Same so thing. you would have spent $40 for that two-hour experience? Absolutely. It was, it was very, same thing with Ratchet and Clank. That, to me, could have been a $60 game, and I would have been perfectly fine with it. Okay. And people, but there is... The, re- I, the reason I feel Ratchet and Clank went the pa- the the route or route or however you want to pronounce the it, route. <laughs> whatever you want to you, pronounce you it. called me out last <laughs> video. I call you out this one. The route. Um, the the route that they did was because traditionally movie tie-ins sink. Yeah, terribly. And to but have, at least Ratchet uh, and Clank was established though. I understand that, I, but my point being, like, it was released with the movie. It, the, the point was to release yes. it with the movie. So it, it's technically a movie tie-in of a game tie-in yeah. of a movie tie. I get you. All right, it's like Inception. All right, there's too many levels to this shit. Um, but but they released it, and I think the reason for the price point was well, we're essentially kind of giving them the same game that they've already played. So let's just kind of like. Pull back the price. I understand. You know? Plus, Ratchet and Clank, not as a big... And I'm, you know, guys, me, big Ratchet and Clank fan, I will say this, is not to the pedigree that people look at a kill zone from yes. Sony, a Uncharted, you know, big AAA games, first-party games that are just the pinnacle. People look at Ratchet and Clank are like, a uh, little cat-looking thing and a robot, what's yeah, going yeah, on with yeah. that? They judge it. So I think the $40 price tag. But it's interesting because some games I could see... Being, you know, $20, like if Madden or NHL, say you get the new Madden or the new NHL 17, next year, instead of doing a completely new game, be like, here's 30 bucks, new engine, new updated roster, new mechanics, there you go, you know, that would be acceptable. But when you see something like a Witcher, a perfect example, Witcher, very, very big game, 
I spent 80 hours in it. That game, I could see CG Project Red saying, you know what? We're not $60. You're getting banged for your buck. It's $85. But this is why we're making this $85. Yeah, yeah. You have this open world replayability, these hours of gameplay, you know, when it may be harder for a journey or a, you know, um, journey, gone home, uh, Firewatch, those kind of games, you know, to charge that much. Like when I saw that No Man's Sky was $60, I was like, all right, yeah. you know, I know where you're going with this. I know what's happening and I'm cool with it, but at least say justify why it was 60 because we've had this conversation on the show. It really didn't, all the promises that were made really didn't come no, to fruition. Come so is it the, really justified for that? I would understand 30. I would be like, you know what? It's a little bit more. Well, that was the original yeah. price point was the 30, I think, or 25. 20, or I like think that. it was 25. Um, and I was down for that, right? But then they, they boosted it up to 60 and I was like, oh, okay, so maybe yeah. this is actually a real game and not just an indie game. And that was a part that I think cemented it for a lot of people. It was like, holy shit, they raised the price to $60. Yeah. This is probably the real deal. And then they released it, and everybody was like, yeah. $60 for what? Like, Minecraft is 10 bucks, and it does more. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Right. You know? Um, I think they got caught up in the hype thinking that this was bigger than it was, and they didn't know how to fucking process that information. Again, like a PR representative that would have been able to, um, to, to, to play the game and say, no, you don't, have, you don't have what you think you have here. See, it's interesting because you see No Man's Sky being now $60 when Until Dawn was $40, you know, and that's an amazing game. And if anybody hasn't played it, by all means, you have to play it. I think you still have to borrow it from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to remember that. But, um... That was an insane game, and it's only $40. I just see that certain games I could see being justified for being more money. <coughs> and it takes a lot for developers to have the balls to say, you know what, no, we're charging this much for this game, you know, and this is why. We're charging the new Witcher or Cyberpunk 2077, which is the new game from CG Project Red. No, no, the, yes. Cyberpunk 2077. I think that's the correct name. But there, I could see if CG Project Red said, you know what, it's going to be $80, and this is why. We have this, 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 this. Yeah. And you're going to make it worth your watch, you know? And then when people sh like shy away these two hour experiences for 20 bucks, and it's like, you know what, after playing Journey, and you guys know from watching the show, I was not a big fan of Journey. I was like, you know, it just doesn't. And I played it, and I was like, I even said to you, words cannot describe... I, I can't put this in the words, what this game... Like, yeah, yeah. This game was just very, like... I, I can't even put... Like, you have to experience it. But I thought about it. I was like, if I knew that was the experience I was going to get, and I knew it wasn't going to be free or anything, I would have paid more than fourteen ninety nine for this game. You know, I want to show that... Uh, that game studio associated with uh, Sa uh, Santa Monica Studio. You know, that this game was worth more of a price tag but then it it sucks because you have these games where like i said no man's sky which promises promises and then you say 60 hours okay you're doing 60 hours i can get behind that because of what you promised <coughs> yeah. Bless you sir yeah and then it fails to do it and that looks bad because then it's like well this indie game that ruins that, it for everybody yeah, else that indie game you know because that's what it was it for everybody else now this is this is where where i can kind of get on board because we we have another conversation that has yet to happen about collector's editions and yep. stuff like that. Soon to um, come on the game. Soon, yeah, soon to that come. Out. We haven't decided when we're going to talk about that, but we did actually brainstorm a couple of things that we're interested in talking about. Um, and and one, of the, one of the things I can get behind on the collector's edition is it might be able to span the gap and, and cross that threshold where developers can say, you know what, you're paying for an $80 experience, that's why we're... We're, we're, we're charging you $80. Now, we're not an indie developer. We know what we're giving you, and it's going to be a massive experience that's yep. going to drain your life away. Like Witcher. Witcher could have been sold for $80 because of the content. And would you have it. understood that? Yeah, I would have understood it. Now, Do you as a person that's never played Witcher, yeah. I probably wouldn't have understood what it. What about if Final Fantasy XV comes out Final Fantasy XV, I'm not sure about, because, again, they've changed up the entire system and they've gone with a whole new so they're they're experimenting. So I would say stay at the baseline. 
with that game. But 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 one example I want to bring up is like Grand Theft Auto. Okay. Right? Grand Theft Auto 3 was a brand new revolutionary experience for the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Um, gaming in general. Gaming in general, but specifically yeah. for the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Boost that price, right? That's a $90 game. I think at the time the games were 80. Yeah, about 70, 70 80. To, I want to say 74.99. Yeah, so that, so but. 90, right? Boost up the price. It's a $90 experience because you're getting a $90 game. Vice City? No, you're getting the same game you got last time, so you're already used to that. We're going to have to tone it down. And back it's to 40 average bucks. price and it's and it's it's well, average price. Okay. Right? Um what was after Vice City? San, San Andreas. Andreas. We completely revolutionized the mechanics. We've, we've, we've included a lot of story-based stuff. New Workout, new, new, haircuts. Yeah, workout, haircuts, uh, bike riding, um, modifying your cars. Like, yep. There was a whole bunch of things, right? We, we changed the... Uh, hot coffee. You know, um, so, so now we're back at that high price point, okay. right? Grand Theft Auto 4. 4, we're bringing it back down, right? Because what really did you do in Grand Theft Auto 4 that was that revolutionary? Not no, much, no, no, no. right? You experimented a little bit in storytelling yeah, and some city you. design, um, and 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 you played around with like this online internet kind of thing. But not too. But you didn't. You didn't yeah. really fucking. You just reskinned a game and sent it yeah. out there, and you brought it back down from where it was in San Andreas. So that's a forty dollar game, right? You brought you brought it back from where you were. Yep. And 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 you you bone you 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 tore it down. Grand Theft Auto Five, on the other hand. You kind of expanded your map. Yep. You have a different form of storytelling, which involves three different characters who all play three different, very different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, adding, adding the GTA Online, adding, adding GTA going Online, going to the golf course, the exactly. tennis courts. Like, there's so many different things that you can do now in Grand Theft Auto Five. Now it's an eighty dollar game again, yep. and eighty dollars for this generation because in this generation is where uh, we're spending what fucking sixty bucks. So might as well be an eighty dollar game. I think, you know, when 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 we bridge the gap with these collectors editions to that point where we can trust the developers to give us an experience that they feel they're they're worth getting paid for, then we can start to we can start to 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 have these experiences that where the price actually dictates the experience that we're gonna have, right? Twenty now the problem is indie developers are not allowed to participate, and the reason I'm saying that is unless you have a very huge and very strong pedigree behind you. Or a company backing you. Well, no, I, I say pedigree because regardless of anything, like you have to produce games in order for people to understand that you know how to produce a quality game. Okay. Indie developers aren't going to have that until they reach that level. And it may never happen for them, but unfortunately you can't participate in this price game where this game is... is is a better experience because of its higher price. It's not going to happen for you because Hello Games demonstrates exactly why. You have no idea what you actually have on your hands. Right? Like Rebirth, Isaac Rebirth. Great experience. Procedurally generated, just like No Man's Sky. Mm -hmm. Much better experience than No Man's Sky. Now, would I spend more for Isaac or would I spend more for No Man's Sky? I would clearly spend more for Isaac, but the developers didn't know what they had, so they're going to charge the same price as any other develop as any other development team. Yeah, but and if you let me uh, let me go on a tinge here, uh, I bring up Play Dead. Okay, and we have a couple minutes left. Um, they came out with Limbo, one of the most remarkable games, you know, abs- atmospheric gameplay, everything, and then they took quite a number of years, to come out with Inside. Mm-hmm. And by and by, Inside is, I believe, a thousand times better. Because yes. they learned from Limbo and they got everything down. Every every room, there's ways you can die and every way you die is a different way. It's just the atmosphere and everything. So you get Limbo getting charged for $20. I could have saw or Play Dead say, you know, this is Limbo, but we want to make it no. 25 I know, I'm just saying yeah. that that's something that you knew the pedigree from Play Dead. No, you, you knew. don't. You don't. Yeah, but you okay, they so played Limbo. Devil May Cry, to answer your question about pedigree. The original going to two? The original going into two, and then three being awesome, four being hated. And, and then four wasn't bad. Uh, but it was Yeah, I know. Was not banned, not to know? three. I know. Right? I Compared understand. Compared to three, it was... And then was, DMC. And then DMC. Pedi- two games means nothing, right? When you can fuck it up in five, 
So again, pedigree, like it, it, it really determines pedigree. It has to be based on pedigree. Call of Duty can always charge what it charges. It gives you the collector's edition for $150 because you get fucking night vision goggles, you fucking creep. <laughs> right? Like, like when they give you a $150 game, they're actually giving you like state of the art military yeah. equipment along with the game that you bought, right? Or they'll do some some weird fucking thing like yeah. that. But they're never going to say, hey, we completely revolutionized the way first-person shooters work. So their pedigree is strong enough where they can say, but spend $150, spend $150, well, yeah, we'll and get, we'll give we'll you Bethesda, Bethesda, dollars. Bethesda with the Skyrim Collector's Edition. You That's get a, a good book, example. A nice leather-bound book with a dragon but, statue. But expanding that further, Bethesda has the pedigree of every time Bethesda puts something out there, it's a good game. Regardless of what it is, right? Regardless of whether it's an RPG open world, it's a first person assassination, right? A post apocalyptic, yep. right? Or or a first person shooter. Bethesda kind of knows what they're doing. Yes, you know. So it's like okay, they can dictate a price for me. But if you're going to say, you know, the bur- oh, well, in, in terms of uh, play Bur- dead, okay. play dead, like they haven't established the pedigree yet. Again, they haven't. For me. One game that was revolutionary did not okay doesn't doesn't establish you as a person that knows what you're doing. Two games that are phenomenal doesn't establish okay. you as a person that knows what they're so, doing. So last question because we're running out of time for this episode. To you, oh, I hit the mic. Uh, to you is my question. So you're saying, and you're with this topic is depending on the developer, they have the right to make the price. No, I'm Depend- s- what but I'm saying if is they're not established enough. Then they shouldn't fuck. No, around, what I'm saying is that collector's edition will allow us to bridge a gap in the future where okay. we may be able to do a pricing that determines the quality of game that you're getting. Maybe, but indie developers are not allowed in this club because you guys don't know what it takes to make a AAA game. Okay. So when you try to sell me a AAA game, you're really gonna need to sell sell it. And the only way you're gonna sell it to me is if it costs twenty dollars. That's the only way because you because of this whole thing with Sean Murray and Hello Games. Hideo Kojima is on his own, and everybody thinks that this is going to be a AAA title, but I really don't think so. Think I think it's, it's going to be, be a indie good indie. game. I think it's going to be a well thought game, but it's not going to be a AAA title. I don't think it's going to be a AAA experience. Do you see him charging forty dollars on the side? I think Hideo. Yeah, I think he'll no. Charge. I see him charging sixty dollars. Oh. I see him charging regular price. Yeah, I do. Because who knows? But but I think that that's the, the the universe that he lives in. His his universe has always been a sixty dollar game, or a, a a market price game. That's the only experience he knows. Sounds. Yeah, I think it does. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please let us know in the comments below. Check below that in the description box for all the links to our Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all that. Lovely stuff. And uh, like the video. Share it with your beautiful friends. Let us know how we did. Should we tease them for a future episode? I think we should tease them. I don't think we should tease anybody. No? No. Not a strip tease? No. No tease. No tease. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, game Game on. on. I knew we were fucked when in the first five minutes I still was not introduced. I was like, five minutes, 30 seconds. And if I haven't yet, I was like, well, no, yeah.